All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR. So in this video, I'm going to be unboxing a few PlayStation 5 accessories, the ones that I pre-ordered uh, directly from the PlayStation site uh, when it was available. So I have the PlayStation uh, 1080p HD camera, the uh, DualSense uh, wireless controller, and the DualSense charging station, which can charge uh, two um, DualSense controllers. Uh, mind you, this is post-commentary, not <laughs> actual commentary from when I was unboxing. Uh, so if my hand uh, gestures don't match up with what I'm saying, that's why, okay? So first we're gonna unbox the, uh, I'm gonna unbox the 1080p uh, HD camera. So a few details about the 1080p HD camera, obviously I haven't tried it out yet, uh, but a few details we know about it. As I said, it is 1080p. I actually couldn't find any details on the frame rate if it is able to do 60 frames. I mean, I hope a 1080p camera that's releasing in 2020 is capable of doing 60 frames. You know, that's to be expected, but you never know uh, what to expect nowadays, but it should do 60, 60 frames, right? Um, it's also uh, capable of... Um, background removal you can use it obviously with a green screen the playstation 5 is going to have like a picture in picture mode for you to be able to crop your background uh and as i said use it with a green screen it has a built-in stand uh with it so you can mount it on top of your uh on top of your monitor or on top of your tv and you know it's just it's a it's not a product that i'm going to use i honestly kind of just bought it just because it was there um, obviously, people who are interested in uh, using um, this with the PlayStation VR, I, be I believe the original PlayStation VR, uh, they're releasing an adapter for, for you to use it with that. And the PlayStation VR 2, the next model, is inevitable. That's going to come out in the next few years. I'm sure Sony is already working on that. But I'm not somebody who's a fan of VR or interested in VR, mainly because it's almost killed me in different scenarios it's made me very sick and i and i believe it's because the technology wasn't really there um for you know the the highest frame rates and to make it look more smooth uh there was there's been a lot of ghosting and you know the the image quality just hasn't been the best uh for for vr for me and that's why uh you know i stay away from it but maybe with the playstation vr 2 if they're able to improve that and get away from so many cables then i'll give it a shot but as of right now I'm probably just gonna give away this um give away this camera um because I mean I, I obviously have a DSLR camera that I use to record and use with them use with my gaming videos. Uh it is USB 3.0, so obviously, you know, they're up to standard with that. We shouldn't be using um anything uh other than USB 3 3.0 in 2020. So it is USB 3.0. I assume it you can use it with PC. I'm actually going to uh try that out. Uh, after I upload this video, see how it uh, works with PC and PC programs. And yeah, the design is very similar to what I remember the PlayStation 4 uh, uh, camera design being. So yeah, and it, of course the color theme, it matches with the PlayStation 5 itself, which is kind of like the black on white or the, well, it's it's actually gray. And I'm going to get to that when I talk about the DualShock 4. Uh, these products are not actually white, they're gray. And the gray color is actually very similar to, if you remember the place, the original PlayStation, uh, more specifically, I, I guess you could say the PlayStation 1, the, the P-S-O-N-E. It's actually that type of gray more than actual white. You know, when we've been watching videos, when we've seen the reveal of it, even just looking at the box, I would say the even the box makes these products look like they're actually white, but it's not white, it's gray. And, you know, a lot of people have been worried about, you know, the, them getting dirty. The gray that it is, it still might get dirty. Um, you, that still might be something you have to worry about. Uh, so I, I do think maintenance and cleaning uh, of this controller will be something you have to worry about a little bit more uh, than the DualShock 4 um, in its uh, typical black. So... Yeah, the the uh, the packaging of all of these um, accessories was very minimal, uh, as it should be. It didn't have anything unnecessary in there. 
you know, it, it had the, the cables, the, um, uh, you know, the, the manual, uh, and, and just the device. So it was very, very minimal, you know, as, as it should be, as, as I said. And the camera retails for $50, I believe it was. It was either $50 or $60. So now let's move on and talk about the, uh, the PlayStation 5 charging station. So the charging station can obviously charge up to two, two uh, DualSense controllers. And the interesting thing about it is the design of the chargers, uh, at least from the back, it actually looks like the PlayStation 5, that whole uh, that, that type of tower design, right? Obviously, you'll have it face down, um, but from the back, it looks like the PlayStation uh, 5, you know, uh, tower design with the, um, uh, with the, uh, the outer shell. Uh, kind of going up and out so yeah you can charge two controllers uh we know battery life was kind of an issue with the with the duels with the dual shock four uh and i'm not somebody who typically keeps two controllers around but i do plan to play more games uh with my wife so that's why i actually did get this um dual sense um charging station so you won't have to use uh you know two cables uh, to charge two controllers, you could just plug this in and you'd be able to charge uh, both the controllers um, at 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 once. Um, and also, you can uh, you can also free up a USB port uh, without sacrificing the performance. That's also you know the benefit. It's a click in design. You just dock the wireless controller quickly and easily uh, right in, and you just leave them to charge. So it's quick, easy, and simple. Uh, the DualSense charging station retails for uh, thirty dollars, I believe. I believe it was, and yeah, it's that simple. That had this packaging and uh, was very minimal and straight to the point. So yeah, there's not not much to the the DualSense charging station. Uh, we got to see uh, see about the batter the battery life of the DualSense controller uh, and how fast the DualSense charging station actually charges it. So yeah, I got to get used to saying dual sense. I keep wanting to say dual shock. I got to get used to that. Um, I was thinking about actually buying the, uh, I didn't buy the PlayStation headset because I mean, honestly, the PlayStation headset is not, if you want somebody with the best audio quality, you don't buy a PlayStation headset. I was kind of going to buy it to unbox it, but I was like, nah, let me not just waste that, that much money. And also I did not buy the media remote because I don't, I'm, I only play games on my consoles. So there's no reason for have, me to have a media remote. I'm not going to watch anything on my PlayStation. Okay, so now let's talk about this unbox and talk about the DualSense 5, right? So when I took the DualSense out and I held it in my hand, it felt extremely familiar, which I like. It didn't feel, so it felt like a new controller, but it didn't feel new in my hands, if you get what I'm saying. It felt like I held something very similar, extremely familiar like this before, because the DualSense 5 in your hands feels very much like the DualShock 4. There's, it, it's really not that much of a difference. Trust me, once you get it in your hands, you're gonna honestly feel like, I've been using this controller probably for the last seven years, right? So it feels in your hand very similar, but you feel slight differences, such as the grip material on the back. PlayStation, the DualShock 4 has some grip material on the back, but this feels uh, like a little bit more grippable mat material. And I believe you won't be able to see it, but I believe somebody, I seen an image, somebody zoomed in on the material in the back and it's just a whole bunch of like X's, O's and the, and the PlayStation shapes. But you got to enhance uh, very close to actually see it. But that is what um, makes up the grip on the back. So the, the directional buttons, once again, feel similar to the, uh, the, the directional buttons on the DualShock 4, but they feel a little bit smoother. Whatever this like kind of almost gel material, it, it kind of feels like gel, gel material, but it's still solid, right? Um, it's still, you know, tip uh, one directional uh, pad because when you press one button on the uh, 
on the D-pad, you could still see the rest of the move. It's the same thing with the DualShock 4. The thumbsticks feel and look very similar. It's the same con uh, concave design, obviously. Uh, and they look similar and they feel similar. So the thumbsticks are just pretty, honestly, pretty much uh, the same as far as I'm I'm concerned. Um, they have the, the face buttons and the, the directional buttons have this translucent or transparent uh, visual to them. There's, they've gotten rid of rid of the colors that were on that is historically on the on the face buttons, but they're gone now, and I haven't really seen anybody mention them, so I don't think anybody really cares. I typically don't care. Uh, we know that PlayStation was going for uh, innovation when they designed this controller. You could definitely argue, and I would agree with you, that some things that they've implemented into this controller, or at least the way they're going to be used, is gimmicky, such as we've seen. We've seen with that Astrobot game, you can definitely say blowing into your controller, that's definitely a gimmick. But other things such as the features like haptic feedback, uh, which is, you know, you could feel uh, the responsive feedback in your uh, in the in-game actions. Right. And the adaptive triggers, you can experience varying uh, the varied uh, levels of force and tension, and they're going to implement it uh in specific ways in different games we've heard about how other how each developer is actually going to use it it has a built-in microphone uh, a headset jack uh it has uh, of course the create button they've changed the name from the share button uh to the create button and i believe the other button on the right side that's that's the menu button and you know it's just a, a overall familiar controller it has a mute button right in the middle so you know if you need to just mute that and you know not have an open mic you can mute it um it's of course us it charges uh with USB C. we are in 2020 it still has you know the the motion sensor uh with the, you know with the gyroscope feature and the built-in accelerometer and all that stuff uh so yeah it's just a an evolution of the dualshock 4 honestly like i said we got to see uh how it works with uh pc and uh you know what the battery life is like even though they've said the battery life is better of course i didn't mention the touchpad yet um so the touchpad i think they went they've uh on the touch the touchpad on the dualshock 4 a little bit more square um this has a little bit wider design uh so the fact that that's wider means the controller is a little bit wider so they've like kind of curved the edges of the controller they've kind of curved it out to like widen it out because one of the complaints with the DualShock 4 and PlayStation controllers historically is people said it's too small. You know, they accidentally who do a whole bunch of accidental stuff um, when because the controller is too small, their their thumbs are touching and stuff like that. I've I have huge hands. I've never had that problem, but people have said that I hold my controller very <laughs> strangely. I play claw style. I play claw on mouse and keyboard. I, I hold my controller in a very similar claw uh style also so let me touch on l2 r2 uh r1 l1 um so i'm somebody when i play shooters when i play any game i like to you know i like to use l1 r1 i like to use what are considered the bumpers it's the better way to play in my opinion scientifically that's proven but i'm not going to get into all that but that's typically what i how I like to play to experience, you know, all these features that are going to be implemented. I'm obviously going to have to use the triggers because they have the, you know, the, the adaptive feature in there. So when I, when the PlayStation five comes out, I'll, I'll obviously give that a shot. Um, but it, the triggers are a similar design to the PlayStation four. They're honestly not that much different. It seems to be practically just the same design with newer technology to give the triggers more value and more meaning. Uh, because as I said, PlayStation, one of the ways they want to give you a new experience is through the controllers. But um, overall, yeah, it just feels like an, a natural evolution of the DualShock 4. It doesn't seem like a, a very different controller in your hands. It looks very different, but it feels very similar, honestly. It's just like a, a, a new presentation but at the core of it, it's the same controller with uh, just small alterations to it. So, yeah, I mean, that's it, it's still intuitive. It's still 
you know, they just kind of gave it gave it a facelift and, you know, they reimagined the, the light bar pretty much. And the DualSense uh, retails for $70, I believe it is, more expensive than the DualShock 4, but it also has more features and more technology. We'll have to see if uh, those additions uh, warrant the price. Um, you know, when we actually get to play these PlayStation 5 games, as I said, I'm just going to try this out with some PC games, but that I obviously won't be able to experience all of, uh, you know, the features. Um, so I like the design of the controller overall. Like I said, it feels very familiar. Um, the arms, the, the bottom, um, you know, handles of the controller, I like how it's like rounded out and it has like this slope. It's like has kind of like sharp edges at the bottom, but then it has like a flat surface at the very bottom uh, of the handles, almost like just a flat nub almost. So yeah, I, I overall like the design. Um, it's it's a it's definitely a good design, and of course I didn't mention the PlayStation button with the classic PlayStation logo right in the middle, uh, which can be used to turn on the console and you know just go to the, uh, go back to the, the you know the UI and and the menu and all that. So yeah, that's the unboxing video. Let me know what y'all think. Make sure you hit the like button. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to actually review the new PlayStation um, app because they've updated it. So maybe I might take a look at that and upload a video of that. We'll see. Um, so yeah, hit the like button, follow me on Twitter. If you're not, uh, going to be uploading a lot of videos in, in, in the coming weeks, um, playing a lot of games, doing a lot of reviews. Uh, so yeah, follow me on Twitter. If you're not, as, as I said, hit the notification bell. So you can know anytime I upload a video, check out my last few videos and yeah, hit the join button below this video to support the channel. All right. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out of here. Peace.